Mumbai in six. But uh, that is it, Chiara Fontanese right at the end on lap eight. Did a Hello and welcome to our studio show here at Toy Chantal. It's round 11 of the FIM MXGP Motocross World Championship. We're at Toy Chantal and my guests this week on the studio show will be Max Anstey, David Philippartz and the team manager from Kawasaki Monster Energy. That of course being Francois Lemarier. But before we kick off here with Max Anstey, let's catch up with what happened a week ago in Maggiore in Italy in MX2 Race 2. A great atmosphere here. MX2 Race 2, Petr Petrov hitting the gate. On board with Severbril Yakov around the first turn as Valentin Guio on the standing construct. KTM took the Fox hole shot. Wasn't long though before Tixier was through. Hurlings was in third. Verandis and Febril well placed as well. But by the end of the first lap, Jeffrey Hurlings made a move around the outside of Tixier to move into first place. Valentin Guio did his best to hang on to third as Tonkov fell. Not for the first time in the race. Fell from seventh position, remounted in tenth. And would stay there for the majority of the race as Nicer charged up the inside of Siwa. That put him into seventh. Ferrandis 122 and Guio, they weren't done. And they would battle all the way to the end of the race. Max Anstey went out with a blown rear shock. What's turning out to be a miserable season for the Brit on the Yamaha. Ferrandis eventually found his way into second with that pass on Jordi Tixier, who then came under pressure once again from Valentin Guio. Guio then moved into third. These two duked it out for a few laps. Slight mistake there from the Swiss rider Guio allowed Tixier back. Fevre joined the party as well. And it was a pretty intense battle for second, third, fourth and fifth place. Tixier had a lucky escape when Fevre made a mistake, allowing Tonus to go through. And Damon Growlis got up the inside of the 59 of Tonkov. And a lap later, Valentin Guio crashed in the same corner, losing valuable positions. Guio would eventually come home in seventh place. Jeffrey Hurling, though, once again, masterful at the head of the field. Ferrandis was in second, Tixier was third. That's how it finished in race two. Tonus fourth and Geiser was fifth in the overall Grand Prix. Win number 40 for Jeffrey Hurlings here at the iconic venue of Maggiore. Jordi Tixier second, making it a Red Bull KTM 1-2. Tonus was third, and Hurlings, of course, extends his lead at the top of the MX2 World Championship standings as we go to Germany in one week's time. But win number 40 coming at one of the most iconic venues of all for Jeffrey Hurlings as he picked up another red plate that says he's still championship leader in MX2. Well, that was Majora just one week ago, and one of those riders who featured in the highlight then, Max Anstey, bike at Yamaha Cosworth Rider, here in the studio with us now. Max, obviously, we'll talk about that um, incident a little bit later on, but um, let's take you back to the beginning of the season, Qatar, <coughs> first Grand Prix of the year. Despite what happened there, it was a pretty positive start for you, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, we we done our work in the off-season, and, um, and and it carried us through. Um, I, I did the whole off season on a on just a stock 14 bike and uh, and then literally I was supposed to uh, supposed to race an international in in England before before the start of the season and on that weekend Steve said um no we're uh, we're going to go out with uh, the equipment we knew was was really solid and strong from last year and um and and that was the last year's bike and and it, and it carried us through uh, through Qatar and and obviously some some good starts and solid laps put put me out front and um and to be fair, it just felt easy, you know, Every, everything was clicking and, and that carried on the next couple of rounds. Um, I, I still had to get the bike dialed in a little bit, um, but but definitely, obviously, with two back-to-back -back podiums and, and there, I mean, um, I, I still look at it, I went 1-1, one, one, so, um, yeah. so, you know, you know it, it is what it is, but... Well, this is the second race. The first race, you had a problem and didn't yeah. finish. The second one, you stalled. Yeah. Um, and both times whilst leading <laughs> oh. the race. And that's what I say. I mean, you were looking good. You were comfortable. You had good speed. And you looked relaxed more than anything else. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I, I think that's, um, that's a big part of it. We, we were ready. And, um, and, and, you know, since then, it's just, just trying to find ourselves back back to it with, with the new bike. But I'm 100% I'm confident in Steve and the team that we, we will be back to it because we know... The package works. We know with the good bike and me on the good bike, we can, you know, be out front, and um, and, and that's that's all we need to get back to. And and it's just it's just taking a little bit of time at the minute. But. Yeah, but you, like I say, despite what happened there, positive start in general. You're riding good. Speed was good. All of that. Two podiums back to back. Thailand cap and uh, Brazil. Yeah. Um, not easy tracks. Not easy places to go to, particularly Thailand. Yeah. But um, 
you, I guess after what happened there, it was some kind of consolation, wasn't it? Um, getting on the podium, but also you showed, actually, I'm a contender for this year. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was always my goal to be, um, to be right out front. I knew, watching the, the results from last year and racing against this bike, or the bike that I rode, that I knew the bike was going to be uh, mega and, and it was going to be one that we could win we can win the races on um, and, and I proved that and I just wanted to be consistent and, and which I was to be fair I mean the first three rounds we, we should have been on the podium three times um, and it's just the way that it goes um, so, so we know we have all the pieces of the puzzle it's just bringing everything together and um, and unfortunately, like I said, it's taken a little bit longer. I remember in Brazil, I was like, yeah, yeah when the new bike comes out, it's going to be mega, it's going to be even faster. And it is, it's better. But it's just so much different from, from the old one that it's, it's taken a little bit of time. And um, yeah. That's yeah, and it's a shame really because since those flyaway races, wheels have kind of fell off your championship challenge a little bit, haven't they, somewhat? Yeah. Just because of going between the 13 and the 14. And you have to ride the 14, really, because yeah. that's obviously what Yamaha are making. That's what they're selling. Yeah. Um, but the start of the season just coming too early, I guess, in terms of development of that bike. Yeah, uh, exactly. W w to be fair, I feel like we're in a position now where we should have been in maybe February because mm. we it's just taken so long to develop and, and we were just unfortunate with getting the parts late and um, and, and things like that and, and getting everything built. Um, so, you know, I, I feel like we're at a stage now where I've been doing loads of tests in the last few weeks. It's just been, been flat out, trying this, trying that, and, and we've been obviously making some big improvements. Um, it's just holding everything together. Um, I, I mean, y you know, it's easy, you can see, to make uh, the, the Yamaha work yeah. out there. My, my teammate, um, he, he's out there riding around every weekend, never has any, any failures or anything like that. But, but do you think know that's the difference in riding styles? Maybe you're a harder rider than he is, for instance? Well, no, uh, well, we're, we're pushing for a bike that's competitive to win. We don't want to be, I don't know, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, sure. whatever. We, you know, Steve strives to be the best and so do I, and, that, and that's where we want to get to at the beginning of the, back to where we were at the beginning of the year. Um, and, and I know everyone's improved and, and everyone's, everyone's stepped up, the bikes, the teams, everyone. And, um, but we'll get there, it's fine. I have 100% confidence in Steve and, and the bike and, and I like the way that he works. So, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We had a nice relaxing travel all the way out here. Um, we didn't another miss any, missed flight. Didn't another we? missed flight. No, we, we were <laughs> fine. We we got out here all right. We had no stress, so <laughs> no one hit any deers on the way. So we were fine. That's all right then. But <laughs> going back to you know uh, this season, I get what five years now in your in uh, you know in MX2. Um, Kawasaki was your first year, and then obviously you switched to the Honda team, then the Suzuki team now at Yamaha and 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 whatever. But yeah. In terms of when you've made those moves, you've made those moves based on watching those bikes in that particular year, I guess. So you thought the Honda deal would be good and it didn't work out. Suzuki, it didn't work out. And now you're at Yamaha, you see the, what that did last year. It's got to be a little bit frustrating, hasn't it? You know, now yeah. that they come out with a brand new bike, a new concept, all fuel injection. And yeah, I, I mean, it was at the beginning, it was a little bit frustrating. But I've proved to myself and to everyone around me that, you know, we can run up front and, and I can do things that, you know, I can do big stuff so um so it, before it was more of um i don't know I, I wasn't in control of my situation or my my destiny as it were so i feel like now you know i, I made everything happen with steve i i did everything and and i'm like i said this year okay we're not going to win a world championship but we will be in a really strong position for next year um and and I suppose, you know, we're taking it race by race. We want to, you know, I want to be on a podium. I want to be back to where I should be. I want to run out front. I'm going to get two hole shots tomorrow and, and, and clear off. That would be brilliant, just like we were back in, in Qatar. But um, the, obviously the, the main thing is getting a solid base and a solid package together for, um, for the future. I mean, I've got two more. I've got next year and the year after in MX2, and I'm definitely with, I'm with Steve next year. So I didn't do all this development and all this work on the bike for... Um, for nothing, okay. and and I know that the lights at the end of the tunnel, and we will have the the yeah. fastest or one of the fastest bikes, and it works great, and 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 that's um that's you know. Well, despite the blown shock there we saw in race two in Italy a week ago, um, <laughs> Italy, you did seem to turn a corner a little bit though, didn't you? You were up in at the sharp end in the first race, running as high as fifth, sixth, in and around there, eventually dropped to eighth or ninth, I think. But yeah. did it feel good to just to be? up there rather than down in sort of 17th 18th it did but we've definitely been making it a little bit difficult for ourselves with uh, with um i don't know just it seems like we, we fix stuff and 
and we have one problem and then we fix it and then something completely random and completely different happens and now <laughs> and we're all scratching our heads because um, the shock I mean I've been riding with that all, all year we've never had a problem and on the bike like I said the first race was brilliant we had a, a slight problem with the clutch with 10 minutes ago but then I thought definitely for the second one we were um, we were going to be ready to rock and roll and uh, okay I was coming from gate 35 on the outside so it made it a little bit more difficult mm. but I just wanted to go for the feel and, and go out and have a good race and <laughs> I mean I'm watching you here from race one obviously this is the race we're talking about in some respects I'm watching that and thinking from the outside just a different max that was maybe a bit more aggressive at the start of the year it almost seems like okay let's just get through this one and just pick up some points and then do that in the next race and pick up some points is that yeah. just from your body language on the bike I, I I just wanted to sort of finish every practice session and every session we, you know in France we missed all of time all the time all the qualifying race and all of practice Sunday morning um, here in time training um, I jumped really big and snap something and um, and then uh, obviously in in the the qualifying race we didn't finish so um so it's just been i don't know we've just been everyone's frustrated but it's not it's not just me the whole team obviously we're all frustrated but we've all been working 110 percent and it and it's nice to go down to the workshop and see that and in the second race um you know it's a bit like wacky racers we're dig dastardly you know we had the little the little button for the for the smoke screen but unfortunately it didn't come out yeah, or on a bond time. movie yeah I, I wanted it to come out you know if i hold shot it over the jump so then no one could see but it <laughs> it sort of um yeah it didn't really happen so yeah and we had a slight malfunction all right and what about um what about the plan for the rest of the season then is it purely a case of um Testing and development now, getting the bike ready for for next year. Um, well, I mean, testing and development is ongoing. Mm. Um, with Steve, it's ongoing all the time. Um, but based on the fact that you can't win the championship, which was the ultimate goal this year. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, I just want to race. You know, the goal for this this weekend is be early for every session and finish every session and just put ourselves in a good position and and go and race my laps and then we can see where we are. Um. And, and it's fine. We've got how many rounds we've got left? Eight, seven, something yeah. like that. Um, we, okay, obviously, you know, the goal was the World Championship at the beginning of the year, but I just want to go and, go and race. I just want to go and race. I, I want to race the guys, and whether I finished fifth, sixth, tenth, or, or on the podium, I just want to race. I just want to be, be out there battling with the guys and, and, up, and up front and, um, and not have too many hiccups. All right, well, look, Max Anstey, bike at Yamaha Cosworth, thanks for joining us. Uh, while he disappears and we wait for our next guest, let's take a quick look at what happened a week ago in MXGP Race 2. Of course, uh, Tony Cairoli was in dominating form, wasn't he? The gate drops for MXGP Race 2. On board with Davide Guarnieri. Tony Cairoli once again hung off the back of his KTM, grabbed the Fox hole shot. Kenny Bobrashev was in there as well. In around about fifth place, center of the screen. Watch here though, in turn three, a little bit of argy bargy involving Clement de Sal and Evgeny Bobrashev. And we can see why. On board with Guarnieri, a ram up the inside from the Suzuki. Bobrashev looks down, no, there's a problem as well. Turned out to be a broken leg for the big Russian. Tony Cairoli though was clear at the head of the field on the opening lap and once again looked at. Demolishing his rivals as Van Horbeek in third position tried to find a way past David Villapart, who was having the ride of his season so far on the DP19 Yamaha. Van Horbeek eventually went through and moved into second. Villapart at that stage was third with the 183 Kawasaki of Frossard in fourth and Mattis Caro on the Wilvo Fort Red KTM. A good start for him in fifth. Wasn't to last long though. He fell, came in with a sprained wrist and at the same lap, Frossard also came through, suffering from stomach cramps. He would not score points in race two. David Philipparts came under attack from Clement de Salle, who was riding in some discomfort after his crash from race one. De Salle, though, went through to go fourth, pushing the Italian back into fifth. Tony Cairoli denied the chance of winning the overall last year, had to settle for third in that particular Grand Prix was looking odds on as the race went on to secure a double moto win on this iconic circuit. He went on to take the checkered flag from Jeremy Van Horbeek. Strybos was third to sell and Philip Arch rounded out the top five, but what a great day and a memorable Grand Prix victory for Tony Cairoli. 
Van Horbeek was second, Strybos third to Sal fourth, Philippart's his best result of the year in fifth, and Kai Rowley extends his lead over to Sal. In the championship, Van Horbeek stays third. There's your podium, Kai Rowley, Van Horbeek and Strybos here in Italy. Well, that was a quick snippet and a quick highlight of what happened a week ago in Italy, Maggiore, and uh, the circuit just down the road from my next guest, David Philippart's DP Yamaha. And um, for those who aren't aware, where have you been? But this year, David set up his own race team uh, to compete in MXGP. David, welcome to the studio show. Congratulations with the team and, of course, for last week. But um, when exactly did you decide <coughs> to start the team? Yeah, hello, everybody. Yeah, last year when the, I, sp I speak with uh, the other team, uh, no, nobody won me because uh, it's no really good season. And after uh, last year, I broke my arm uh, for my two time. And uh, it's difficult for team uh, take me. And uh, in the se finish September, uh, start November, I, I, October, something like that, I, I, I think uh, it's better change my life for uh, uh, every different and my opportunity is open something in Italy for maybe workshop on the shop or, or uh, take my new team with me and, uh, and my girlfriend and Alex Casella is my manager take, uh, take care with me and uh, they, we open the team and we, we start in October to, to think and uh, to ask uh, the bike and uh, yeah this uh, we start. Uh, yeah, there is uh, Arco. Is we we look for uh, everything with uh, Giuseppe because I I have my new truck uh, in Arco. We have my new sponsor coming uh, and uh, many people, and uh, it's good. It's good for me because I'm I'm so happy to start my new job uh, and uh, and it's possible stay in, in the. In the race, this is uh, the best for me because I won't stay in the race. I also stay in this life. Sure. And how difficult has it been for you? Yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> it's, it's very difficult, but uh, the more difficult is the, in November and December because I have to check uh, check everything uh, and take everything. You know, mechanic, uh, toolbox, uh, truck, uh, check, check the bike, uh, check helmet, uh, everything. Start to zero start to also the workshop uh, and uh, uh, it's n this period is, uh, is so hard because also we have to need uh, money for the season. This, uh, you know, uh, the season is long, you need uh, much money and uh, in December uh, when they go to sleep uh, it's not easy because uh, may maybe I, it's too big for me but uh, I say well, we try and we'll see what happens. For the moment, I'm so, so happy because uh, we have a good realization in uh, Majora and uh, also the other race in Spain. Uh, and uh, we have also some problem, but you know, when we have new everything, uh, my mechanic, uh, we have a new track, we have a new workshop, uh, it's not easy. We have some problem, but uh, we have also a good, good uh, day, say Majora. And for me, because as first year, we have uh, uh, new, new everything. Staying in the top five is so, so, so good. Definitely easier being a rider then. It's, it's easier being a rider than yeah. a team manager. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> it's more easy. The for team manager is so hard. Yeah, it's and so obviously <laughs> you're doing. You're wearing two hats: team yeah. manager hat and uh, obviously yeah. the the rider as well. But was Yamaha the obvious place to start uh, your team and? Is that because of the relationship that you had with Mikhail Lee, you were world champion in 2008, for instance? Could you have decided maybe Honda, Suzuki or Kawasaki? What was it about Yamaha that you decided to, yeah. to build a team around this? I asked uh, last year with uh, other company and uh, I asked a lot of time with uh, Michele and Lawrence. Uh, I proposed my, my team to Yamaha and to other, uh, to other brand, uh, but I I tried the bike, I tried other bike, try Yamaha, and for me Yamaha 
for the moment uh, I, I like so much I like the engine I like the frame I like everything and uh, I think uh, for my first year it's better stay with Yamaha because uh, I know the bike I know Michele I work with Michele for five years and uh, I know he's uh, speak one time is uh, for one year is, is the same yep. uh, for me when I start my first uh, first team I say it's better one year good with a good team back to me say Marinaldi for uh, for have experience uh, for you have something something problem with the bike on everything I know Michele is or Rinaldi or Lawrence is possible to help me no and uh, this is the my decision because the bike is so good and uh, and back to me have Rinaldi and Lawrence uh, we work five years, we, we win one title mm -hmm. and uh, and and nothing we 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 start this uh, operation together and i hope uh, we we continue like that and maybe we we improve yeah. more do you now appreciate what it meant to be a factory rider in terms of i guess in terms of budgets travel all these things are done for you when you when you first start racing the dream is to ride the world championship and then to ride for a factory team you did that and sometimes you forget the basic level no. you know, it's very easy to forget that isn't it because the team does everything they book the flights they they bring the money they spend they, they have everything you don't have to think about anything yeah. apart from to train and, and to ride and to win but now that you're in that position do you appreciate what you had in the past more um and do you understand it you know a little bit more now but uh, the, the 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 one thing is uh, in my life i every book uh, my flight uh, every book my i ask for my mechanic uh, uh same when i stay into michele all the time i have my my training mechanic my training bike is uh, no different than the now because uh, before i ordered the, the booking for flight for me and my girlfriend but now i now just i book my flight for me my girlfriend my mechanic you know uh the more difficult is uh you do when i uh, have factory rider i know things uh, the material for the bike the the driver for the mechanic the, uh, truck. the bike uh, this is uh, is difficult because before i know things it's just the the truck come in the race yeah. and you take your uh, bag, bag and, and and go in the truck now when uh, we have time to go in the track uh, you have to open the tent uh, you have to fix the the, the everything for the sponsor also we have to look everything and uh also the mechanic is, is mechanic sometimes he forget the sticker but it's much important the yeah. sticker no for the sponsor for tv to the, the for the picture and uh, this is the problem you have to stay open 24 hour to things uh, okay this correct uh, uh this sticker say uh, is there is good and this plastic okay this tire is good it's uh many small things when they have when before i'm factory i i know uh, things yeah. no yeah this is i think so difficult now sure well <coughs> it wasn't um a, a really explosive start because everything was new um i think the best gp before italy one week ago was spain you finished seventh overall but Let's take a look at what happened in Italy one week ago. Obviously, you're not so far away from there. How important was that race for you last week? Yeah, it's, uh, I, yeah I like the track. Yeah. Also, last year, I, the, I big crash, but I tried to, to race. It's my favorite track in the world, and uh, I like the ground because I train every day in the same ground mm. close to my home. But also, I... I think so I have more uh, aggressive because m many people coming to ask uh, many people uh, my fan my sponsor is coming I guess it's you had two things didn't you one it's the the GP of Italy so you you want to perform for the fans but yeah. now that you have your own team it's more important to do well for the sponsors the fans the family that come to help you yeah this uh, for sure when they have uh, res resultation same in the 
in Majora, the, my sponsor is more happy. Mm. <laughs> well, just looking <laughs> at the second good. race, you yeah. made a good start second, Van Horvick passed you on the first lap, and then, you know, in the end, you were battling with Sean Simpson here for fifth place, which obviously determined fifth or sixth overall for yeah. you two guys. There is the, action, the reaction here. I spotted it just out the corner <laughs> of my eye. This is why we slowed it down. This reminds me of you winning the World Championship in Faenza. It must just have same. felt <laughs> just as good, if not better, now that it's your own team, to have fifth overall, but it felt like a GP win. Yeah. Yeah. But the, 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 the thing is uh, because uh, nobody's pet stay in the top. Yeah. Because uh, everybody, you have something. Uh, you you riding with the, this tire is not good. You you have old truck, uh, you have like that, you have like that. And when the, I finish the top, uh, now everybody say, ah, no, sure. you work good. And for me, it's the same win the, the title, no? Because I have... Uh, I have my my opportunity, my team, private, my mechanic. Uh, is everything start to zero, and uh, and the battle uh, with uh, factory rider is not easy. Mm. And uh, for me, it's in Majora, I stay good eh? because uh, I stay many many lap uh, in front to the sal, many lap uh, uh, to Simpson. We bat a lot, eh? and yeah. Simpson is just the rider, no sure. mechanic, no. You have uh, two things: uh, the bike work, the engine, the truck. And for me, it's uh, it's more energy when they stay there. Yeah. Obviously, you won here in 2007. Um, yeah. We don't expect you to win, but it would be nice to have another performance like Majora here on Sunday, wouldn't it? Yeah. My um, uh, I like the track. I win my first. I uh, miss one uh, GP there, and uh, uh, two months to go. I change my training. Uh, guy and uh he come back uh, my antonio scalabrino he come back uh, to me is the guy training me in 2008 when mm -hmm. i win the title and uh, in the last two months uh, we changed my training my style to live and uh in spain uh, we have improved in france uh, i have uh, some problem but uh, it's possible stay in the top 10 very good in majora we have a good race the top five and uh, I think so there uh, is possible stay in the top five, uh, top 10 very easy. And uh, but because I change uh, something in my last two months, uh, the training, uh, something, the bike also, we work for the start because uh, this moment, the start is uh, is so, so, so special. When you start in the top uh, is half uh, you, you make because the, the top, Five rider is riding very, very fast in the moment. Yeah. All right. Well, look, that's all we've got time for for you, David. But uh, yeah. David Philipparts, DP Racing Yamaha, um, set up his own team this year. Got his best result last week in Italy. Right. Well, thanks, David. We'll Thank let you, you go because we're going to welcome in our next guest. And uh, while we do that, let's just give you a, a quick announcement as to the, the competition this week. Don't forget, uh, as always, on MXGP TV, follow us on our Facebook page. Um, and obviously you have the chance to win uh, MXGP TV Access, the official video game. But this week, with it being the MXGP of Germany, Max Nagel is back for HRC Honda. And he's wearing a, a limited edition Fox clothing uh, kit. And you will be the lucky recipient. So you, get yourself to ch you have the chance and get yourself the chance to win that uh, Fox limited edition kit of Max Nargon. And I'm going to check, actually. It might be signed as well. So uh, a nice little prize for you in there. Well, my third guest has arrived. Of course, uh, team manager for Monster Energy Kawasaki Racing Team, Francois Le Maurier. Uh, congratulations uh, on uh, a decent start for the season, you know, with uh, Gauthier and you know, winning the first round. But it's been a little bit tough. We'll talk about all these kind of things. But um, welcome to Germany. And... Um, you know, like I said, it's kind of been an up and down season for you, hasn't it, at Kawasaki this year? Yeah, sure. Like you said, we, we had a really uh, strong result in first DP in, in Qatar uh, with Gauthier Paulin winning and, and Steven uh, at the fourth place. Um, and after, like you say, it's came like uh, up and down with, uh, with some unlucky races. Yeah. Uh, Gauthier did a really, really strong job. Yeah. Uh, well, let's start in Qatar because yeah. I know we have footage because it was a, a great start. You couldn't have wished for anything better, really. You know, Gauthier winning the second race or winning the overall, both guys on Kawasaki battling for the, the race win in Moto number one. And uh, I mean, the footage that we have here is 
probably the best footage that we're going to get from two team riders, side by side, wheel to wheel, all that kind of stuff. Scary to watch sometimes because, <laughs> you know, during the race live, um, you know, we were kind of thinking one slip, these guys, you know, do they know they're on the same team? Yeah, sure. You know, it's uh, it's always uh, stressful for us when our two riders are, are battling together. But uh, uh, that's racing. We know we have two two clever guys, and uh, and and yeah, they did great job for us. But <laughs> just looking at Qatar here, you know, obviously Stephen wanted to impress first Grand Prix riding for you guys again in MXGP. Um, yes, uh, Stephen is, is feeling really really good on the Kawasaki and. Uh, and we can see uh, with these images that, uh, yeah, he's playing with the bike, so... But it was good yeah. to watch. I mean, from your side, were you ever nervous at any time? Yeah, for sure, we are nervous when we see that, but um, we, we trust our, our riders. Uh, yeah. Like I said, they are, they are clever, so we know that uh, that brings this result. Mm. But like I say, per perfect start to the season. Gauthier comes away with the, the red plate, but of course we know the season is long. Um, they didn't finish on the podium in Thailand, Brazil. Um, one no, or two yeah, problems in Thailand for everybody. Thailand, we had some some uh, fuel uh, issues, yeah. uh, so we we really we are really frustrated about about this uh, because we know that we could get also good uh, good result, but sure. uh, technically it was uh, was really difficult to to react. Uh, so we have to uh, don't to forget that, but we have to learn from it and, sure. and do uh, better next time. And obviously, uh, by the time then we get back to Europe, um, the European leg of MXGP, um, we go to Arco de Trento. Gets off to a pretty good start, doesn't it? Stephen wins the qualifying race. Yeah. Um, but then, of course, in the main race, he, he had a crash, a big crash. Yeah, he had a big crash. So that stopped uh, all the effort he did, uh, you know, um, at the beginning of season. Mm -hmm. So we had, to, uh, we had to start back um, uh, from the beginning to, to get back uh, his confidence uh, back. And then we are working on it, and he is close to to a podium uh, result now. Yeah, and um, just looking at Matley Basin here, see, it was about as long as that between Arco and Matley, where everything seemed to click for him, didn't it? The confidence, the speed. Yeah. Um, you know, first race close to and challenging Tony here in second position. Yeah, he's closing back the the gap between him and and Keoli. So we we know he's he's really fast rider. Uh, so the only thing he needs to to get uh, our setup result is uh, is the confidence and and it's on the way back. So it's good. Yeah. We'll just go back to Arco. Obviously, Gautier, um won that first race where Stephen crashed. You know, from your side, it was a case of bittersweet, wasn't it? You know, you have Stephen makes the whole shot, or pretty much is is up front and then crashes, doesn't finish the race. We're not sure on his condition. Gautier wins the race, yeah. um, closes the points back on Tony that he lost in Thailand and Brazil. And then DNF the second race with a simple, sure. simple problem. It was know. kind of a nightmare uh, race because it was starting good uh, uh, on Saturday with uh, with qualifying races uh, win for for yeah. um, for Steven all shots uh, from from Gauthier. Um, Gauthier won the first race had the DNF on on second one uh, and and uh, the the bad uh, crash uh, of Steven. So it's yeah. again. Uh, I would say unlucky yeah, yeah, yeah. race for us. And then we go to, uh, to uh, Valkenswald. Again, generally looking good for Gauthier. Wins the first race, wins in the sand. Yeah. Um, you know, and I could see from his reaction when he came over the finish line in Valkenswald how happy he was, you know, um, celebrated to you guys over there on the, on the pit wall. Um, but again, just, uh, I don't know, it's difficult because everybody, and I, I mean everybody, the journalists, um, Everybody loves Tony, and Tony's winning, and, and he's, I guess, consistent, and he's successful. But I guess from the media side, everybody wants a challenge, you know, to be taken to him. And then Gautier arrives, and then it falls away. He arrives, and DeSalle arrives, and it falls away a little bit, you know. Yeah. From, from your side, that must be a little bit frustrating, but, um, you know, we saw it again there, didn't we? You know, um, just Gautier, you know, wins the first race and crashes in the second one. Yeah, you like, uh, like you say... Um uh, Tony Caroli is, uh, is a strong guy to beat, and uh, uh, and Steve um, Gauthier is, uh, is uh, one of the challengers. And uh, we were really happy with the, with the result in uh, in first moto with yeah. a moto win. You know, for a French guy to to win in Valkensvard is not uh, that uh, usual. No. Uh, so that's uh, shown that that um, Gauthier passed a, a step in his riding and. Uh, and any surface he rides, 
he, he goes for a win. So. Yeah. Like I say, he obviously didn't finish the second race, got uh, halfway around the first lap, but he was in France. But do you think the problem, because no one really seems to know what happened in France, do you think he was maybe trying to win the race on the first lap, that second race in Valkenswaard, trying too early to keep Tony in his sights and maybe the, the mistake came that way? Yeah, the, the start was not that good. Uh, I mean, he was in top uh, top six, yeah. uh, five, and uh, he wanted to, to be uh, directly in front, so had a, a strong attack uh, in first lap. Uh, he took a line uh, that he was to used to, to take in first moto, but the track changed a little yeah. bit, so he had a, I would say a bad surprise uh, with, uh, with, uh, the change. with the way it, it went, you know. And then, in terms of having spoken to him uh, in France, obviously we did a, a team report that weekend, but... He doesn't want to come back until he's 100% ready. He doesn't want to come back 90% because he wants a challenge for race wins and being on the podium. The championship is gone, yep. but it's just more for his personal achievement, his personal goals, isn't it, to win races, to show that he's still a challenger, a contender. Um, how far is he away from making a return? Uh, when uh, can we expect to see him on a bike? Is he even on a bike training yet? No, he's not back on the bike yet. Um, we, we expect him to ride uh, the next GP, yeah. as usual, you know, but uh, it depends of, of his recovery. And again, we, we don't put pressure on him because we also want to, to get him back uh, 100% uh, fit. And um, we expect maybe in, in Sweden, but that's, that's not sure yet. Okay. Um, and so the plan for this year then, um, Stephen, try and win as many races as possible or be in contention just to try and lift himself up. Is it possible for him to finish top three, Stephen? Uh, or is he too far in behind? championship, you mean? Yeah. Um, I think will be really, really difficult. Um, the, the thing we can do now is uh, to try to win races and, and get uh, as much podium as we can. Okay. And finally, before we go, uh, one quick word on Jeremy Van Horbeek. Obviously, he was with you guys last year, rocking the podiums every week this year, apart from Qatar. Yeah. Um, are you surprised at his level of performance this year, or is that something that you was kind of always there waiting to happen? Yeah, you know, we... we we hired um, Jeremy last year, so yeah. we, we, we expect uh, to get a good result with him. We were looking for some podiums, he uh, was really close, and uh, we know he, he is a, a strong rider and, and he showed it uh, this year, so... Not surprised? Not surprised, no. Okay, well look, Francois Lamare, team manager for uh, Monster Energy Kawasaki Racing Team, thanks for joining us here. All the best for the rest of the season. Thank you. And uh, that's all we've got time for. So um, enjoy the racing this weekend, round 11 at Teuschenthal, MXGP of Germany. And we'll see you back in Sweden in two weeks' time. We'll see you then. Bye for now.